Hello, this is David Hillier here and I'm going to be giving a short video on equity risk premiums. I'll be looking at how the risky investments differ from low risk investments and I'll be showing you using real data from the UK how investments can really differ in risk and in return. So without further ado, I'm going to just show you some data here. Um, this is data on three different securities. It's, uh, we've got the three month UK Treasury bill rate. And now what I've done with that is I've standardized that so that it's standardized to 100. I got that data from the Bank of England. We then have the FTSE 100 standardized to be 100 in December 1995 and we have the FTSE 250 standardized to be 100 in December 1995. Now the reason I picked these three different securities or indices is that I'm looking at the differences in risk. Um, the three month UK Treasury bill is regarded as the the lowest risk investment in the UK and in fact we would say it is equivalent to the risk-free investment. We then move to being a bit more risky and that is the FTSE 100. The FTSE 100 is the index of the 100 largest companies in the UK that's listed on the London Stock Exchange and the FTSE 250 is the index of the next 250 largest companies uh, listed on the London Stock Exchange. So if we were to rank them, FTSE 100 is 1 to 100 in terms of size and FTSE 250 is 101 to 200 uh, 350 in size. Now what I've done is I've got the time series and the time series goes from 97 all the way through to April 2014. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph the, the this series. So choose line and we'll make this slightly bigger. And you can see right away that the FTSE 250 gives you a higher return over the 18 year period that I'm looking at, 19 year period that I'm looking at. It gives you a higher return than the FTSE 100 and the FTSE 100 gives you a higher return than the three-month T-bill rate. So that's a, a very clear picture of the difference in returns that you can get from these three different investments. The T-bill is lowest risk, and you see that basically it just basically doesn't move. Uh, we have the FTSE 100. You can see that it does move. You, it, you see the increase... Um, round about here which is the dot-com bubble, the crash, we then have the uh, the global credit crunch in 2007, the crash and then we've got the, the steady growth uh, with a little hiccup here for the sovereign debt crisis. If you look at the same pattern uh, or the same time periods for the FTSE 250, the smaller companies, the it looks as if the movements in the 250 are accentuated, they're exaggerated. So when you see a drop, you see a big drop, when you see an, an increase, you see a big increase. And that's especially prevalent since December 2002. So the FTSE 250 uh, grows quite significantly, goes three times, whereas um, goes by 300%. Whereas the FTSE 100 only grows, well, grows by about 170% between that three-year period. And then there's a massive crash. And then you've got a massive growth again in uh, those smaller companies. So what does this mean then? Does this mean that the um, three-month T-bill is not as good an investment as the FTSE 100? And does it mean that the FTSE 100 is not as good an investment as the FTSE 250? No, well, it doesn't. Because as I alluded to earlier... Each of these three securities have different levels of risk. And the different levels of risk lead to the different levels of return. And so that's what leads to an equity risk premium. We have to get a higher return because we're taking on more risk. So you would expect over a longer term 
that the FTSE 250 would give you a higher return than the FTSE 100. And over the longer term, you would expect that the FTSE 100 would give you a higher return than the, the three-month T-bill rate. I say over the longer term, it's important to emphasise that because in short term, you can get fluctuations. So if you look at uh, just between uh, around about the 2007 mark, that both the FTSE 250 and the FTSE 100 experienced negative returns compared to the T-bill, which you know had a very low return. So the T-bill would have performed better during that period. Uh, so it's over the longer term you expect to see these patterns. And that leads us to uh, our slides because if you, this is, I'm using data from, uh, well it's not data, I'm, I'm actually reprinting the a graph from uh, Dimson, Marsh and Staunton. It's a 2002, um, no it's not, it's 2012, 11, sorry, 2011 update on the 2002 paper and you can see the reference at the bottom. And what that does is it is looking at the equity premium. So the equity premium is the difference between the return on the equity and the return on the debt. If you look at this, you can see that for every single country that was studied, there was a positive equity risk premium. Whether that's in comparison to bills, which I've used here, or whether it's comparison to bonds, which are longer term investments, you see that every single country studied, there is a positive equity risk premium over the longer term. And that's a really important result in finance. Also, it's, uh, this graph is, I think, is a fantastic graph because it gives you a benchmark uh, to start thinking about equity premium. So if we were just looking at a particular market and we're, just, we're thinking, OK, what will the equity premium be over the next year? Looking at this table, if we're looking at the UK, then we would say, well, it would just be above 4%. That's a good beginning uh, position that will allow us then to start thinking about um, making it more accurate and more precise through further analysis. So a quick video. Thank you very much for listening. And um, future videos will go on to how we use these uh, securities. Thank you very much.